Hello and welcome to Vitality Women Leading Audaciously. Today, our audacious leaders are a team, a duo of very beautiful, very oh. vital looking women, Shelby and Christina of Take Two Content. These gals are from LA and doing innovative video and I can't wait to hear all about them. So welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you so you. much. We're so excited to be here and talk about vitality and women empowerment. This is exciting. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. Um, you know, I, video is such a necessary thing these days and it's almost like overnight, everyone's become their own producer. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a big difference in self edited and produced content versus professionally edited and produced content, which I'm sure you guys know. Um, yeah. I'm just really curious how you guys came together in your partnership and why video production at this time. Yeah. Right. Well, we were both on an acting path, as you might imagine, being in LA. And we met through that world of, of comedy and, and acting. And I remember meeting her and she was just so tenacious and like driven. And I, it's true. <laughs> and she wanted to make her own content. This was before like everything was oversaturated and people weren't doing it as, as much. And I was like, gosh, I want to link up with her. <laughs> and I also thought she was really funny. So that was kind of how it started. And we made some comedy videos together, which were really, really bad, bad. <laughs> really bad. Um, but then we just kept doing it and honing the craft and we did it for fun, essentially for several, several years with no payout really. And then it kind of turned into this through the pandemic and us losing our day jobs and we, it kind of like stumbled upon it. We are like, why aren't we doing this um, for money and for, uh, for brands and businesses? Cause it just kind of fits so well from our past experience. Excellent. Yeah. And that's really cool. Shelby, what, what about you? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of a similar, it's kind of the same vibe, but um, yeah, I met Christina. I thought she was so, so funny. Um, she kept going back and forth to New York. So like there was a period of time when, when she was here, we would film something and then she would leave. And then finally, when she came back, we just were like, okay, let's, it kind of started pretty organically. I would say mm -hmm. like, we both just wanted to do it and we both just kind we're of passionate worked. about it, about it. Yeah. We were both just kind of doing it and she was always down, like had great ideas and, um, and then, yeah, from there, it was really like we did a couple branded things to start out. And then the pandemic, it was kind of like sink what or swim. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that pushed us to really like take it a lot more seriously as a business. And to be honest, we were kind of hitting a wall in terms of energy. Like we were like, I don't know how much longer we could put out this without seeing any kind of return. Sure. So yeah, of course. It has to sustain itself and if not be profitable. And it's really, I just feel like I used to own a video, video production company with a partner. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like no one really knows that actually. Um, That's cool. I've never even talked about it on camera or live. And it's, um, it's funny because I've been a, an art director technically ever since, I don't know. I mean, I, I modeled from 18 to 24, 25. And then I became an art director and I've, I've, I've kind of been an art director all of those years, whether it's through video um, or photography or, or different things. So still photography, all kinds of things. So I've been oh, wow. in the fashion industry. Yeah. And so like, I really understand what you do. And I also understand the need and the, and the industry has changed so much in the last five years. I mean, with every iPhone, like there's the cinematic, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm like, I got to get the new iPhone for the cinematic alone. I mean, that's yeah. so exciting. And like, can you really produce like high quality video now with your camera, with your phone? Like, you know, do you guys think that that's actually a thing? Can you actually produce yeah. high quality video with your phone? Yeah, I you think can. So. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it depends what you're doing. Yeah. Like, the project and, you know, I probably wouldn't like, we just did a, our first broadcast spot and obviously we're not going to shoot that on an iPhone, but, um, in terms of like the everyday content creator. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of in literally in it's your hands, how, how good of quality these yeah. iPhones are now in the picture. The so, thing is, as I'm sure, you know, um, when it comes to creating content, there is a learning curve when it comes to editing. And so that's where I think some people kind of like, you could shoot amazing footage, but if you don't know how to put it together, 
um, either so it's visually aesthetically pleasing or so it makes you laugh. Um, right. Timing is, is a big part of what we do because our niche is comedy. So, um, and I think it, what's really helped is in the editing process, we, it, it helps you with um, the acting, with, with the writing, because it is all about the timing. So I think those two things go hand in hand. So the more you edit, the more you um, learn when you're actually uh, shooting or writing. So, yeah, yeah I love that. And, and this, the music, right? I mean, that's also yeah. huge. I mean, it's critical, right? The music can come at the wrong time and nothing works then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an art form. Like I love being on camera, but I loathe the editing. <laughs> yeah. I just like, I start fiddling with it and I'm just like, I can't even, I can't even like, it just is so, it's such a different skill set, right? It is. is. It's so technical. She's way better at the technical than I am. And I, I can hold my own in the editing room, but I'm, I'm more prone to get frustrated, <laughs> frustrated yeah. with the technical stuff. I like toss my phone across the room. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but even self-producing, I think is really a challenge. And I think that's really where I stop because everyone tells me my superpower is on camera mm -hmm. and, um, it's really challenging because I feel so limited without my video production company anymore. My team, you know, it's like yeah. oh, it's so stifled. So how do you um, compete with people who, um, you know, who are working abroad? Um, you know, I get pitched literally multiple times a day by, by video editors, um, you know, offering ridiculously low prices. Now I'm sure working with them would be a nightmare because of the language, you know, I, I of course, right. So many different things but like you mentioned comedy is your niche but mm -hmm. like how do you um how do you kind of reconcile with like what's happening in the marketplace right now with self-producing um competitive pricing and things like that that i feel like uh, when it comes to uh editing and things like that because there were there was a time when um we were kind of like okay we're gonna we're gonna just do editing and there we did run into that problem with especially with all those sites like fiverr and and upwork and they do they do the job for such a low price and it's just not sustainable. Um, so I think that's why we've kind of packaged it as we have where we, we, we do conception all the way to final. So we have that skill set of, of comedy writing and concepting along with um, having a network of people that is our production team. Um, yeah. So I think all those skills combined, um, it's a little easier to, to navigate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the script writing is key, right? It's yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then, definitely. And and yeah. We haven't taken on um, really any solo editing jobs, like just editing in a long time, just because I think now at this point, if people are looking for us to edit, they're coming to us because of comedy, they want the edit the timing to be right. Um, but yeah, we, we're not, I guess we kind of don't really take on just solo editing. Just yeah. I appreciate you, you calling that out um, and how you've shaped your, your niche. Cause there's one thing of, I'm going to consume media. I want it to be funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And humor is tricky. I mean, you have to be pretty brilliant to, to capture humor in a way that's witty and, um, you know, it's, it's really, I don't know, who do you guys love? Like, who are people you respect in terms of their comedy writing and performing? My gosh, there's so many. I think within the, the ad world, we definitely look up to the, the Harmon brothers, um, Goodby and Silverstein. Like, there's, like, their stuff is inspiring because it is so out of the box and, like, catches your eye right away. And I think that's, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say um, the Harmon Brothers, for people that maybe don't know, did Poopery, Squatty Potty, the Purple Mattress ads, all those YouTube ads that, yeah, everyone yeah. knows. And they are big risk takers. Um, and I think they've honestly changed the industry. And now yeah. everybody kind of wants that. And that gives people like us the flexibility to say, hey, look at what they did and look at how successful it was. Let us take those same risks. Right. Yeah. Like who would think like a unicorn pooping like rainbow yeah. after, you know, <laughs> like that was so out of left field. I mean, yeah. I know so what it's funny. Funny. Yes. Of course now I have one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So I think like our goal is to try to find those uh, clients who are willing to take those risks with their content and um, have, have a little bit of fun. Cause I think that's what people resonate with when they do see ads and there's a level of respect when you see something funny or out of the box and you're like, okay, 
they're smart. They know what they're doing. There's a little level of respect there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I love that. And, um, gosh, we, things have been so heavy and serious. Like we really need to lighten up and, uh, humor is just such a great relief actually. Yeah. And you know, humor comes from pain and, and it stems from, uh, uh, relatability and we all have all these problems in our lives and there's, there's dark, really dark things happening, but if we can relate on a human level and I think comedy just brings the best of that out, the human connection. Yeah, it can. You know, it can, definitely can. It can also be used divisively, but not to be a yeah, devil. Right. No, I agree. It can. It absolutely can. I just know how great I feel when I laugh. Like, you know, when you laugh and you're like, your face hurts, you know? Yes. 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 So much. I mean, that's like, that's the state I love to be in. <laughs> As much us too. too. Us <laughs> too. Cool. You want to bring joy to the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a deep, deep belly laughter, you know, the kind yeah, of <laughs> yeah, nothing is better. <laughs> yeah. We were listening to the song this morning. My daughter is like kicking me out of the bed at like 5 45 a.m. She's like, we're going to the gym. I'm like, all right, okay. But then well, you feel oh, so great. Like you're two hours into it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's only eight o'clock and I feel this great, you know? Yeah. Um, on the way home, I played the song for her um, and she loved it. It was just like, literally, I mean, it was just, it just felt like euphoric. It was just so beautiful. Yeah, that's amazing. Not Aww. too much humor, but she was like the perfect song. It was so fun. What a great yeah, I mean, Music is a huge part of it. At least um, I, I've always had a deep connection with music and I think some of the best ads, like you obviously it's tough to get some of the, the great songs that everybody knows and recognize and recognizes and loves, but I think music is just so impactful, um, with visual. So impactful. It can, it can make or break something yeah. like sometimes it's, if something's not working, that last piece of the puzzle is you put in the right song and it's like, all of a sudden the whole video comes. Together. Yeah. It's interesting to get down. What is it? called the get down on netflix oh no, no. you gotta see that you gotta see it the you get down see. okay yeah, it's not it wasn't popular it's like the story of um what's it called master flash and the furious five it's like a story of uh, harlem and oh wow know, yeah and it's 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 about the birth of like r&b oh, oh cool. cool yeah and i think it's a dramatized you know story like a true story though um and uh just the i mean the music Sing. Yeah, you guys name we did um Amadeus like Mozart. Remember that one? It was, oh, did you see it? Yeah, I don't remember who did that though. But he's uh, yeah, he did this one too, and it, he wrote he, a lot of the music himself. And anyway, wow. it was just like you should definitely definitely see. Okay, it. we need to put that on our list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what? Um. So this is all about vitality. I'm all about vitality. Like it's so important, but I also know that people make decisions about their life and their health based on like their education, like what they believe is true. Wow. And I think video is such a powerful way. I mean, I've created a bunch of programs over the years with, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of content. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I call it edutainment. Yeah. And yeah. it works. It definitely works. Uh, we've got thousands of students in over 60 countries enrolled in these programs and mm -hmm. Um, it's all about natural solutions, but like, who knows? Like there's so much conflicting information out there. So I'm just curious what you guys do to maintain your vitality. You know, I think you said it with education. Um, I think it's so unbelievably important. And I feel like it can be slipping these days. Um, so for us, or at least for me, I know, I always want to be learning and growing and, and, and learning a new skill, even just for what it does to your brain. Like it, it when you stop learning, you stop growing. And so true. Yeah. staying curious. And, and I think that's amazing what you're doing with these videos on health. Cause I think a lot of people don't, I, I think a lot of people don't know. They just don't know. Yeah, it's true. And, and, you know, like she said, always, you know, you think, you know, you think you're pretty well versed in something, but then you, a whole new door opens up and like, there's a whole wealth of yeah stuff to come. And then also just, you know, taking care of yourself and huge. We can't, you know, when we have big shoots and lots of things going on, you can't function in that high stress environment. <laughs> if you're not, you know, 
taking care of yourself, taking care of yourself and making sure that you're setting aside some downtime, making sure that you're eating properly. We're both we, kind of good about that. Oh, I, think. I feel like I, I am to an extent. I feel like I definitely guilty of, um, doing too much, especially with this baby business. Like we we're doing everything. And so it is hard for, to take the time and be like, okay, I need to do some self-care because you're always thinking about like, oh, we need to do X, Y, and Z. Like it's just nonstop work sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's always good to keep in the forefront of your mind, like take a second. <laughs> have 10 minutes to myself. <laughs> right. I do meditate in the morning also. <laughs> I mean, 10 minutes is huge actually. Yeah. And it, it can actually just, I, you can shift so much in a 10 minute meditation, a 10 minute nap, 10 minutes of breathing, yeah. 10 minutes of just closing your eyes and you know, breathing into your heart, like whatever, like 10 minutes is huge, but we have to give ourselves permission, don't we? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Yes, we do. Yeah. And just keep it conscious. I think that's what I struggle with. The permission giving is the hardest part. Totally. Yeah. I know it is for me. Cause it's like, I, I, I have a to-do list. That's like no joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really long. And it's like unrelenting. Yeah. And uh, I got to give myself permission to be like, okay, this is enough, but I try to prioritize like right. what are the top six things that are going to bring me the most, you know, the most momentum forward on the, on the things that I value the most that are, you know, at the top of my list. So that's a really big tool that I like to use for that. Yeah. So especially as a mother, like you probably have so many things to juggle. <clears throat> like you, you got to find your, your tactics of how to prioritize, prioritize and balance. I am officially the driver. <laughs> <laughs> she's 17. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> and she's like, she's like, no, she's starting to like take over my calendar. She's like, Oh, um, you know, she's like scheduling it. And I'm like, honey, like I have to work. Like I have to yeah. work calendar for my daughter. So she knows I'm not available to drive her places. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. You're a mover, mommy Uber. <laughs> yeah, I'm <a> mover. <laughs> so who's like your ideal client? Um, the ones you like to serve the most, because there are a lot of women in the audience who are female entrepreneurs. Most people I know have video, but they know it could be better. Um, so what, yeah, t- describe to me your ideal kind of client. Yeah. Um, I mean, we talked about this a, a little bit in this sense, but um, since if it's someone who's interested in doing sort of a comedic ad for their product or brand or business, definitely someone that's open to taking risks because a lot of times people think they want to bring comedy into the mix, but then they're like, oh, um, actually, uh, a little fearful. Yeah. yeah. And um, we always try to kind of push people to think outside the box a little bit, try something new, try something different um, and and try something that's, you know, a vi- we, we always strive to make a video that people are going to want to share with their friends. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Not because necessarily because they're like, oh, you need this product. Maybe that's part of it, but because they're like, oh, you have to see this. And then it's just the right fit. And then it's spread around from person to person to person. And then they're like, you know, I could use this product too, but, but basically that's free marketing for our clients and it's only going to help us too. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. And there's all these different flavors of humor too. And uh, this is the perfect podcast because I'm all about, uh, you know, a direct and audacious tone. You know, I think it's really yeah. important, especially, I mean, I'm not from California. Um, so I'm an East coaster. So th- it comes naturally to me. I found out yeah. since I've lived here, <laughs> yeah, East coast trade, but it's all good. <laughs> I am from the love East that. coast too. <laughs> originally. <Yeah. laughs> Right on. Well, you do have to be audacious uh, and daring uh, to think outside the box and yeah, um, take the risk of offending people or even getting it wrong. Right. And boy, have we got it wrong like, <laughs> many, many times in many different ways. Um, but, you know, we've, we've learned from our mistakes. We're yeah. still learning. And yeah, um, I would say too, for the people who do want to make their own content it's we always say like just you know start small like maybe don't spend too much money on anything quite yet like really get into the groove and even when we used to do our our comedy videos or you know the stories on Instagram cuz to you're supposed to do all these stories and i think just being vulnerable and being who you are and presenting that to your audience is 
is the best approach because that's what people are going to connect with. Hmm. Yeah. I love that. It's so tricky to self-producing, especially with food. Cause you're like actually preparing the food. You can't be like filming yourself preparing the food. So right. Yeah. So tricky. But, uh, but I love that. And I just uh, have to get over myself. <laughs> yeah. If you're you know, out there listening, get over yourselves too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's interesting to me about like the food preparing of the, in the food videos is, um, I heard this recently and I don't know why, like I never put this together before, but someone was talking about how on like food network shows, they have two kitchens. They have the kitchens where the food is actually prepared in the, the kitchen that's shown, you know, on the TV show or whatever. And I just was thinking just now, like when you were talking about vulnerability, I would love to see like a cooking video with the mess. So, yeah. cause when I'm doing it, I'm like, why does it look like this for me? And for her, it looks like everything's sunshine and roses. Right. So uh, I feel like messy cooking is something that I would want to watch. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's often to- <laughs> Could I have permission to use your idea? Yes, you, yes, please. We'll call it messy cooking. If yes. You're like, you're make a mess today. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I you love that. in your fridge and make it messy. But yeah. <laughs> That's how my kitchen looks when I cook. Or yes, bake. exactly. <laughs> kitchen. Honestly, like if you're cooking with like, you know, passion and mm-hmm. whatnot. I mean, I like, I, it's an art form for me. I actually cook to relax. I just love making food. It's like the big, big joy of mine. Do you want to come to my house? And make food for me? <laughs> <laughs> And we'll like cook and we'll talk. I, I, it's really fun. Sometimes I host these little parties where everyone just brings a bunch of something like oh. a bunch of radishes or some basil. And then we just make something together. It's actually really fun. Oh, so I no one that. plans what you bring. It's kind of, oh, that's really fun. You I should love film that. that. Yes. <laughs> like documentary style or something. Yeah. That would be, I would watch that. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And, um, to do it during the day because we need like proper lighting yeah but yeah yeah no oh, it's so nice to meet you guys any last words of wisdom for our listeners today i would just say you know go for it like we've said go go for the the risk go for the vulnerability um people want to connect and um don't forget to laugh don't forget to laugh <laughs> and if you're looking to make your own video content just start It doesn't have to be perfect. It won't be perfect in the beginning. Uh, Just start. Nice. And then how do we find more information about you for Take Two Content? Yeah, uh, you can go to our website. It's taketwocontent.com. With With the number two. Number two. (laughs) And uh, we're also on Instagram um, and YouTube. And our personals are just uh, Shelby Dash and K.A. Cliffo. Nice. Thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your vitality with us. You guys are so beautiful for those. You get, you guys can't see her unless you go to the YouTube, but these girls, these women are so beautiful. I thought they were like, are you so guys? Nice? Nice? <laughs> like, Lenny, cause you look really young. And like, no. you are, I'm blown away that you have a 17 year old. Yeah. She's- I'm, I'm going to take that young comment and carry it with me for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Yeah. Cause, um, my grandmother used to say you're only as young as you feel. Oh, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So carry that with you for sure. Anyway, be well, thanks for being here and, uh, take good care. Thank you so Thank much. You.